Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. Welcome back to Class of Friday, where we look at a G.I. Joe Classified Series 6-inch action figure. This week I am turning my attention back to the Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origin Movies figure with the Baroness. I have almost worked my way through all of these figures. The only one I don't have is Scarlet, but I will get it. I do want to complete this series. I think the figures are better than the movie. Let's take a look at the packaging so we can see how this figure was marketed. We have the window pane showing the figure and the accessories. We have the Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins movie logo. We have the G.I. Joe Classified Series logo, and the name of this figure is Baroness. We have some box art here. It is in a sharp comic book style, and I do like this. I think mostly for the coloring, it's very dramatic. It does bear the likeness of the actress from the movie, Ursula Corbero. The artwork continues to the side of the box, and again, this is really good, and I think it's the color that makes it work. It's very dramatic. This is number 19 in the classified series. On the back of the box we have the generic movie poster artwork that was on all of these movie figures. On this side of the box we have these symbols which represent her specialties. This is one of those comically oversized keys to the city. This is for his tanks side by side as seen from above. This means she took a lightning strike to the brain. That must have been painful. And this means on sunny days she likes to wear a hat and sunglasses. Now that we've looked over the box, let's take the figure out of the box and look at the Baroness. Here is the Baroness outside of the box, and now that the figure is out of the box, I can point out that inside the box, in the space that was behind the figure, there is the Arashikage hexagram, which I also have on my arm. This Baroness figure, like most Baroness figures, is inspired by the first Baroness action figure from 1984, with the black hair, the glasses, the black uniform and the red Cobra emblem. We already got a Baroness figure in the Classified series. We had the Target exclusive Cobra Island Baroness. That was not inspired by the movie, but as you can see, it was still inspired by the original Baroness figure with the predominantly black and red uniform. The Cobra Island Baroness included a motorcycle, a really wicked looking motorcycle too, so she was a vehicle driver. Let's take a look at movie Baroness's accessories. She didn't have a lot of them, but the ones she had were a appropriate. First, she has removable glasses. These glasses are a separate piece and they can be removed carefully. They are incredibly tiny, so you could drop them and lose them very easily. The glasses have black rims and clear lenses. They are slightly flexible, so they can fit on the figure without breaking. And they do fit on reasonably securely. These tiny little removable glasses always make me nervous. The Cobra Island Baroness also had glasses. They were non-removable, and they had clear lenses. And I think I like them better. They just have more style. The next accessory is her primary weapon, which is this MP5 submachine gun and I really like this. Check this out. We have a realistic firearm design with a couple subtle paint sprays on the grips and it has a removable suppressor and a removable magazine. That is great. Her remaining accessories are her machete-like knives. They fit in these sheaths at the back of her belt, and they can be removed. These knives have silver curved blades with paint on the blades. It's always nice to get paint on accessories. And they have black snake head handles, and I love this. It's an excellent detail, very well sculpted, and I like the cobra theming. Let's take a look at the Baroness's articulation. She has classified series articulation, which is usually pretty good. Her head is on a ball joint, so she has good range of motion on the head, up and down, all the way around. And she has some neck articulation, so she can do that. She has butterfly joints at the shoulders, but they are so tight they barely move. She can lift her arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder, but that swivel is interfered with by these shoulder pieces. She has a swivel at the elbow. She has single joint jointed elbows, and this is an unfortunate feature of the early classified series female figures. They did not have double jointed elbows. She has swivels at the wrist, and she seems to have hinges, up and down hinges on both wrists, but the movement is somewhat limited. She has a chest cut, and there is some movement there. She also has a cut at the waist, and there's a bit more movement there. She doesn't have much of an ab crunch, even though it's not obstructed by anything. She has a good leg 
leg split and forward and backward motion on the leg. She has a twist at the thigh cut. She has double jointed knees. She has a twist at the boot cut and she has hinged and rocker ankles. Let's take a look at the sculpt design and color of Movie Baroness starting with her head and on her head she has dark brown hair very well sculpted. She has the likeness of the actress and this is really good. They're getting very good at capturing actor likenesses nowadays. I don't think she looks quite right though without the glasses so let's put those glasses back on and yes there now she looks like the Baroness. She has a black choker collar around her neck for extra sexiness. She has some flesh colored paint around her collarbone and she has black armor on her shoulders. On her arms she has this snakeskin pattern uniform all in black. She has black armor on her chest and back and it alternates between glossy and matte black so that provides a subtle difference in texture. Around her hips she has a crisscross belt with a red cobra emblem on the belt buckle. That's a much needed splash of color on this figure. That belt wraps around to the back and on the back of the belt we have the sheaths for the knives. Her legs are all black without paint. She has a leathery black uniform with glossy black thigh armor. She has tall black boots that kind of blend in with the rest of the uniform and and the boots have high heels and pointed toes. These boots are similar to the boots on Akiko, the other female movie figure we looked at. The boots are similar, but they are not the same. In fact, I don't think this Baroness figure reuses parts from any other figure. That includes the other Baroness figure. These two figures do not share parts. Even though they are trying to accomplish basically the same thing, they go about it in different ways. Which of these Baroness figures do I prefer? I have to say I prefer the Cobra Island Baroness figure over the movie figure. Now these movie figures are fine. They're not bad in general. I do like them and this is a fine Baroness figure on its own but the Cobra Island Target exclusive Baroness figure just has so much more going on for it. There's more detail. There are lots of subtle paint applications and the figure itself just seems more substantial. The first Baroness figure does not have an actress likeness so I can't praise it for that but just look at that face. It's a great looking face and this looks like the Baroness. I would recognize this as the Baroness even if it wasn't connected to the body. That's a, a great Baroness figure. So what we have here is a great Baroness figure next to an okay Baroness figure. So of course the great figure wins. There's something I've noticed with these movie figures and that is a kind of minimalism. They do everything they can to capture the actor likeness but the rest of the figure is minimalist. Minimal paint, minimal accessories and that's not usually what you want. These are six inch figures you want more of what this larger scale can offer. If there is a figure that can get away with minimalism, it is the Baroness. You're going to want this figure to be mostly black because that is the Baroness's style going all the way back to 1984. That was my review of the Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins movie Baroness figure. An okay figure, but not a great one. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel for more videos like this and give this a thumbs up on YouTube and share this video with your friends. That's what helps this channel grow. You can find me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. I can only continue doing these videos with the support of my friends on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, that's a great way to do it. You can even get your name in videos like the names you see scrolling on the screen right now. I'll be back soon with more classified and vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews. I'll see you then. Until then, remember, only Snake Eyes is Snake Eyes.